My name is Arturs Vrublevskis. I'm a solar physics researcher here at Ventspils International Radio Astronomy Center, or VIRAC for short. We're in front of our 32 meter diameter antenna, which is one of the three main research instruments that we have here at VIRAC. It is used for all kinds of research, which includes, for example, astrophysical maser research, focusing ma mainly on ethanol masers, which are associated with the formation of the most massive stars. We're doing solar physics research, where uh, um, routinely microwave emission from the sun is observed and spectropolarimetric maps are constructed showing the emission from the highest layers of the chromosphere and the lower layers of the corona and in planetary sciences where the brightness and the uh, hydroxyl maser emission from comets is observed. In addition since 2016 VIRAC is part of the European Very Large Baseline Interferometry Network or EVN which is a testament to the excellence of this infrastructure and the skills of the supporting engineering staff. One of which, Mars Donnerblitz, will tell you more about the uh, details of this infrastructure and this instrument. Hello, my name is Mars Donnerblitz and I'm an electronics engineer as well as a PhD student here at the uh, Ventspils International Radio Astronomy Center. And I will uh, tell you a little bit more about our main radio telescope RT32 which is a Cassegrain type radio telescope with a 32 meter primary uh, reflector and a 2.5 meter secondary reflector with an F to D ratio of 0 0.36. Uh, the telescope uh, consists of three main elements, uh, the antenna system, uh, the receiver cabin containing 4.5 uh, to 8.8 .8 gigahertz cryogenically cooled receiver uh, down to 14 Kelvin, as well as the room temperature uh, L-band receiver in 1.4 to 1.72 gigahertz. The CX-band receiver provides uh, 46 to 48 dBK uh, G over T cis value, while the L-band receiver reaches around 32 dBK. The RD32 control and backend laboratory contains the NASA-developed field system for VLBA and single station uh, equipment control. It contains the digital baseband converter for digitizing the signal, the Mark V server for recording data or transmitting over optical fiber, the GPS receiver, clock distribution units, as well as various other RF equipment. The data buffering and storing server contains 110 magnetic tapes with total capacity of around 2 petabytes as well as an HDD and SDD disk buffer for storing, uh, temporarily storing or archiving radio telescope data. The high performance computing department of VIREC uh, utilizes an HPC cluster consisting of 30 rack mounted nodes with eight two-core Intel Xeon E5 processors and 128 gigabyte RAM for each node, in total providing 480 cores with 3840 gigabytes of RAM. This part of the cluster runs Slack OS with shared NFS and RSH infrastructure, one gigabit networking and 40 gigabit per second InfiniBand network. Additionally, 10 rack-mounted nodes with two, 24 two-core Intel Gold CPUs and 384 gigabytes of RAM per node, in total providing another 480 cores and 3840 gigabytes of RAM, as well as two NVIDIA Tesla T4 and two NVIDIA Tesla V100 graphical cards, providing 16 gigabytes of memory each are available. This part of the cluster runs uh, Proximus virtual environment on Debian provides 1 gigabit as well as 10 gigabit networking and 40 gigabit per second InfiniBand network. The HPC department uses this equipment for development and implementation of the radio astronomical data processing methods and algorithms in multiple thread mode. Related to single station processing as well as VLBI data processing, satellite laser, uh, laser raging VLBI and radar VLBI. The antenna control unit provides computerized control system of the telescope drive system as well as the control of all safety equipment. We can take a quick look. Uh, while the power cabinet uh, consists of drive control modules and several power amplifying units 
for azimuth and elevation drive control. The power delivery cabinet contains automatic switching between two redundant incoming three-phase power lines, as well as automatic starting for gasoline generator, capable of running all the computer equipment. In addition, there is a start option for a diesel generator capable of uh, running the whole telescope operations under critical conditions. The vertical axis of the antenna is ensured by 450 ton each uh, hydraulic lifts, together holding around 650 tons. The RE32 azimuth drive system consists of two completely new 39 kilowatt asynchronous drives connected to the old gearboxes and the telescope gearing system. The elevation drive system consists of the two asynchronous drive systems connected to the vertical axis of the telescope and together with the azimuth system they provide 2.8 degree per second azimuthal rotation and uh, around 2.25 degree per second elevation speed. The same mechanical elements as you saw at RT32 are doubled at our RT16 radio telescope and their repair, maintenance and daily upkeep is the main task of our mechanical engineers who are supporting radio astronomical observations. The dry air generator is used to slightly pressurize the feed horn to dry off any moisture and uh, to not allow forming of dust on surfaces. While the helium compressor is the main refrigerator unit for our cryogenically cooled receiver. The receiver cabin hosts our cryogenically cooled C-band receiver as well as in-house developed L-band receiver for single station and uh, VLBI observations. However, the capabilities of our antenna are somewhat limited by the amount of equipment we can house in this uh, receiver cabin. Therefore, there is an ongoing project to extend this room to allow for multiple sets of equipment. Therefore, enabling our astronomers to do more observations. Not only the receiver itself, but also the feed system is in-house built. And actually there are ongoing ideas how to improve the feed and uh, develop a cryogenically cooled L system for future. As well, you can see that this receiver cabin can be extended several rings out to allow for multiple receiver sets. Currently, the primary mirror surface accuracy is only about 4 mm RMS. Therefore, there is an ongoing project to acquire microwave holography set to carry out RF surface measurements and carry out alignment campaigns. Currently, the secondary mirror is adjustable only manually, therefore only approximate position is possible. Therefore, there is an ongoing project to exchange the current mounting system with the computer-controlled hexapod system to adjust the secondary mirror position on the fly. We are now at the latest addition to our um, VROC radio telescope family, the Low Frequency Array or LOFAR. It consists of 96 low frequency antennas that you can see here operating at the frequency range between 10 and 90 megahertz and another 96 high frequency high band antenna tiles over there operating at the frequencies between 110 and 240 megahertz. The individual antennas are linked together digitally uh, with a digitally set phase delay which allows for a, in, a, in the end for a digitally set antenna beam which means that, that the antenna can be pointed without any mechanically moving parts. This is one of almost 40 such telescopes that are spread throughout the Europe, which are connected together, forming a very large baseline interferometry network, or the International LOFAR Telescope, the ILT. Um, our station part of the time operates on its own, and part of the time it's part of this International LOFAR Telescope. And it's functional in both of these modes. ILT is a premier world-leading uh, radio telescope in these in these frequency ranges and is a pathfinder instrument for the international square kilometer array experiment the telescope that's going to be built uh, we are using the telescope uh, for all kinds of purposes including uh, pulsar research and scintillation research or at least those are our plans uh, however we have particular focus on solar and heliospheric research due to our 
previous experience and previous results here at VIRAC. We have advanced a hypothesis that uh, open magne magnetic fields originate uh, on the Sun, uh, oftentimes near active regions. And LOFAR will allow us to uh, complement these results and further advance uh, our findings. The RD-16 is a Cassegrain radio telescope with a 16-meter primary reflector and a 1.6-meter secondary reflector, uh, which brings F to D ratio to 0 0.3. The primary mirror is a completely new carbon fiber structure with a metallic inlay for RF reflectivity. The receiver cabin currently houses a 4.5 to 8.8 .8 gigahertz cryogenically cooled receiver, which is a copy from RT-32 system. The RT-16 drive system is capable of uh, delivering 5 degree per second azimuth speeds as well as 4 degree per second elevation speeds. Currently we are in the receiver hub of RT-16. In 2018 we started a feasibility study with ESA to determine if RD-16 or both of Virac antennas could be made ready for telemetry traction and control operations for satellite communication industry. This study concluded that both Virac antennas could be made ready for telemetry traction and control operations for satellite communications industry. This is a great opportunity which led to industry collaboration with Swedish Space Corporation and a follow-on project where the current equipment in this hub will be replaced by systems designed by Virac engineers which are a dual band feed system, a cryogenically cooled receiver system, as well as an SSPA based transmitter system and corresponding IF unit, which will open a completely new field for VIRAC.